Great. Um, now Christopher Carlson is going to talk to is going to give us a PKG dot update and tell us what's going on in PKG land. Yeah, thank you, Ranyan. Uh, my name is Christopher Carlson. I work for Julia Computing, and I'm also one of the developers of uh, the package manager. So to give some background to this talk, um, we have a new package manager since Julia 1.0. It's called pkg.jl. And two years ago at JuliaCon, me and Stefan Karpinski uh, presented it. But now we're at two years later, we have new features, we have some improvements. And if we look at the number of commits here, we can see it increased from 600 to 1.4K commits. And down here, I show a bit of a commit graph and you can see it's been pretty much actively developed during this whole time. So I thought it would make sense with sort of like a PKG update talk showing off these new goodies. And just to be clear, this is work done by many people, not only me. So I showed a few of these main uh, developers here, but there's also many more that have also done contributions. So I, I just want to point out that we did used to have a change log in PKG and here it was added. It was uh, 644 pull requests and issues when it was added and it was in 2018. But unfortunately, a bit more than one year later, here we have it, 1,371. I, I removed it because during these one, more than one year, we were very bad at adding stuff to it. So it kind of looked like we didn't do much, but we did, we just didn't really add it in the change log. So uh, therefore I kind of have this talk to just show you off the new features. And this is as of uh, 1.5, which will hopefully come out really soon. So the first thing I want to talk about is this built-in support for managing registries. In 1.0, you had to manually clone and remove custom registries. It was kind of a manual process, but now we have an integrated workflow. So you can, for example, just say that you want to register add, and here I add a custom registry. You can check the status of the registries you have installed, and you can remove them and so on. So the, the API is sort of similar to how you add packages, but you just add a registry command in front of it. And that's how you work with it. And that was uh, Friedrich that added this. And then we also have something that's called uh, offline mode and you could sort of think of it as airplane mode. Now in this day and age, airplane mode might not be so, so useful. So I kind of uh, took that away and replaced it with something else, which I called work with Julia in the park at a safe distance from others with no Wi-Fi mode, which might be more sort of useful right now. So the point then is that you, when we do a resolving, when we add packages, we only consider versions of these packages that we already have locally installed. So the way you use it is that you, you enable this offline mode. You can see you get an offline indicator in the REPL and you can just add packages like, like normal. But let's say we try to add a package at the version that we don't have installed. Then we get, then we get an error. And we can see that the resolver is saying that there's only 0.5.3 version 053 installed for this package. But of course, in general, there are many more versions installed, but since we have installed, uh, since we have activated offline mode, only those that we have locally installed are sort of used. And this, you know, you can sort of work with the package manager as normal. You might not get the latest version of everything, but it's at least better than, you know, always getting an error when it tries to download new versions of packages. We also have a new resolver strategy when we add packages. So we've sort of made an observation now that when you add a package, you don't want unrelated stuff to update because you need to build them, you need to compile new versions and so on. Now we have a new resolver strategy that sort of tries to change as little as possible in your current project when you add a new package. Now this means that the resolver is more sort of stateful because the current versions of stuff you have installed are now sort of inputs to the resolver but we believe that this will be a more user-friendly experience. And if you want to update everything, you can just run PKG update. And this was uh, David that implemented this. We also have some other nice stuff. One is called what we call the artifact system. And you can sort of think about that as this ability for a package to depend on files. And this is uh, done in a declarative way. It's content address, so you can reproduce it in other machines. And this is heavily used for binary dependencies, or you might have seen this new thing is called JLL packages. We also have something that we call the PKG server, which is sort of a community hosting of packages and artifacts and registers. And that means we are less rel reliant on third party hosting. So we can also then provide better availability in places where 
our third party hosting is not so so good maybe we're also less vulnerable to this left pad incidents when user might accidentally delete their own uh, versions of the packages that was hosted hosted we can maybe provide download stats and so on and there was a talk about this and much more thorough than this in, in this julia con and I, I put a a link to it here and this was mostly done by Elliot and Stefan. We also now have the possibility of putting packages that so they don't have to be in the top level in the repository and you can also have multiple packages in one repository. So we can sort of think about this as a decoupling of a repository and the package. So you can store a package uh, together with other non-Julia content. You can also have multiple packages in one repository. And the new API is if you want to add such a package uh, that, that lives in one of these so-called subdirectory, you give the URL and then you add the, the sub path here after a colon. And this is with the, the API, not the REPL mode, you give this subdir argument. And you can also register a package which lives in a subdir by giving this optional uh, command to the registration bot. So now I want to talk a little bit about upcoming features or plans or ideas. Like I want to be clear that this is no, there are no promises here. It's like this might happen, but at least some stuff we are, are thinking about. So the first one is a really small thing that I just did in a day, but I think it can be pretty useful. It's sort of, you want to know why uh, this, this package, why do I need this package? So I thought about this API, you could ask, uh, why do I need crayons and pretty tables in my current project? And it sort of prints out like, okay, the reason you need crayons is because you have a, uh, you're, you need oh my REPL and that depends on crayons. And it shows all of these things. So it's sort of just a way to get a bit more uh, of an overview of well, what your dependency graph looks like and, and what depends on what and so on. Uh, another idea that we could have is something that I call a sub project. And that's sort of a project that inherits its dependencies from another project. And also the versions of these uh, uh, packages that it uh, uh, inherits are such that the main project manifest uh, defines them. So we could sort of think about this using these for test dependencies where you have your sort of main project and then you have some extra test dependencies. So it's sort of an addition of stuff to your existing project. And this could also be done for documentation dependencies and so on. And this would then replace or more improve the current target system we already have which has some drawbacks that, you know, so we're trying to think of a way that make this better. And there's an issue here that I has quite a lot more discussion about it. And another thing I just recently thought of, I haven't discussed with it so many yet, but if you guys think this would be a good idea or a bad idea, I'll be happy to hear from you. But there's this thing I've noticed that package orders sometimes sort of split out parts of their package into, into a smaller one to reduce load time for upstream packages that only need a part of this. So. Uh, you have this big package, but many of uh, upstream packages only need a part of it. So you make a new package with that part, and then the upstream packages can only load, uh, depend on that one. I think it's slightly unfortunate because you get a larger dependency graph. Usually people put new packages in the repository, so it sort of splits out everything. And I think it makes it a bit harder to get an overview and so on. So a possible workaround I thought about is if you could allow sort of loading an individual sub module of a package that have their own pre-compilation files and so on. You still depend on the whole package, but you just have the option of uh, loading a part of it. So uh, just to see how that could potentially look is that if we have some new syntax of loading this part. So if we have Flux, for example, that has this, it's called a sub package called optimizers, then you could sort of write something like this and that will load only the optimizers part of Flux. And then we could still have this uh, uh, optimizer part inside Flux where it kind of belong, but you could still sort of only load that part and, and then it would probably load uh, much faster than if you have to load the whole Flux. And then you could maybe data frames could have sort of a, a base thing inside it that only provides the data frame structure or something like that. This is mostly an idea and I, I put it here just to get some feedback on it. Yeah, I think that's all and thank you. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much, Christopher.